low so I'm about to warm up um, and I wanted to record the whole thing. So this is a typical fundamentals routine um, and I'm going to use Modacity so I'll show you what my routine on Modacity looks like but first I have to find all of my music which is in piles on the floor and then we're going to go to the living room because that's where I usually practice. Okay let's find what we need in this pile. All right, so first thing, I'm opening Modacity on my phone um, and I'm adding all the things that I'm gonna do first. So this is primarily tone stuff. Um, everything is for five minutes only, so a total of 25 minutes for this very first chunk of practicing. And ready to hit start. And we're ready. I know it's February and this was recorded a few weeks ago when the tree was still up, so don't worry, it's gone. <laughs> um, the first thing I do is address anything physically. So I'm first spending a lot of time here finding poise and ease from the ground up, keeping the neck free, the head floating, the back lengthening and widening. And I'm bringing my arms up with a little bit more width, thinking about its connection to the back. I tend to kind of pause right here and wobble the head a little bit. And I want to keep the shoulders and the arms wide and easy and make sure that I don't start clenching the neck as I bring the flute closer to my chin. In Alexander lessons, we also release all the air, wait for the inhale to come back. It's a super efficient, great inhale. I do that depleting all of the air exercise for a lot of first sounds of the day. So from here, I'm thinking about the priorities of good sound, which is freedom in the exhale, staying easy in the body, resonating in the mouth, and finding the right structure and angles in the embouchure. My favorite way to find resonance in the sound in these long tones is by letting the spine float upward and the head float upward. Thinking about the crown is just easily floating towards the ceiling, keeping the neck really easy. In the low register, I'm really thinking about embouchure. I did not like what I just heard, so I'm grabbing my mirror. My new flute really likes a little bit more structure in the embouchure than I'm used to in the low register, so that's what I'm thinking about here. Moving on to vibrato pulses, I did this one in my getting back into shape routine, but I do this one every single day and it's one of my favorites. With vibrato, I'm thinking about exaggerating the upper end of the pulse, but we have to relax back to create the lower end as well. So I'm thinking about my abdominals as being easy and I'm having a little trouble this morning. So I'm going to do this in a squat position. I often do this one in a squat position, at least at first, and it makes it a lot easier to feel free in the abdominals and in the back. Um, so this really frees the torso. trying to let the inhales be as natural as possible so when I'm depleting all of my air while playing I just open the mouth let air come in you can see my torso inflate and that's the kind of natural breath that I want to fill up with versus one that's super forced and exaggerated because the sound is a little bit more buoyant when my inhale is free and the next part is faster it's always a little bit easier by the end to find ease and I'm standing again because it's easier <laughs> Next, we're doing octave slurs and going back to just the arms, the back, the head, thinking about ease. And in these first sounds, you can see my head starting to tilt back and forth really slightly as I play. I'm bobbling a little bit. I want my head to be really easy and free, floating on top of the spine. I find that this gives a lot of ease in the sound and I don't want my neck to shorten, so that's my focus. I always want the bottom note in octave slurs to be the most resonant and spinning so that I can easily just move the bottom lip forward slightly and get the octave with ease. That gives me the most seamlessness in my sound in anything that's slurred or intervals is 
how much the bottom note spins first. my students to imagine the spinning um, moving just a little faster the moment we go for the octave. Sometimes we want to slow the air down and use too much embouchure, um, but prioritize the spin in the moment we slur up. And here's my view, mirror, modacity, tuner, and a dog. Now we're on to different kinds of intervals with Bernold vocalises. I'm singing and playing a drone pitch underneath because I want the space between the notes in these vocalises to match, to stay open and resonant and not do too much moving around with vowels and with embouchure and mouth, but going for true seamlessness. So that is my goal with these. I don't know why I zoomed in all of a sudden, but looking at myself in the mirror, thinking about ease and simplicity. glancing at the tuner, especially on these middle C sharps and Cs and notes at the end. I want to land well in these as well, so I'm training that every time I do this. Next up, Leo Vice's Magic Carpet Harmonics, another one from Getting Back in the Shape Routine. Um, this one cut off pretty quickly, so you can go to that video if you want to see more of it, but I'm opening the mouth on the harmonics, letting the regular notes spin and sing. And after that, that's the end of my first 25 minutes. I have a student coming, so I have to vacuum <laughs> before she gets here. I have about five minutes, so I'm gonna continue on with more octave slurs, just going a little bit higher than I got to before. And that'll be the end of my tone stuff at the very beginning. So I'm coming back after my lesson for part two with more technique stuff. And here comes part two. We're doing tap no bear number one, harmonic scales, third octave wiggles, and number five from TNG. So we're starting with number one. <laughs> Starting even lower than is written as a challenge and watching my fingers in the mirror just kind of pausing to see what are my fingers doing here. <laughs> a lot of information to uncover every time you do this. necessary in the very bottom notes and in the middle I'm speeding up by doing an abbreviated version just one round per key and then we're gonna go back to doing a lot of re repeats in the highest notes because that's where we need the practice By the blank stare, we know we're moving on to something else. We're going on to Harmonic Scales from the Flute Scale Book by Patricia George. I really like this book, um, and this is a great one for finding just supreme ease in everything in higher notes. And we only use the left hand to create the entire scale because we're using harmonics at the top. And I'm just thinking about it, how easy everything can feel with these before I speed up.
same book. These are called Third Octave Wiggles. It is a full page of just third octave. Um, and you can do the regular fingering first, repeat a couple times, and then do a trill fingering. It's a good one for refreshing your trill fingerings each day and just, again, finding ease. That's my goal in the upper register every time. Towards the end we get very high so I want my fingers to move together and sometimes with these trill keys added in the upper high notes fingers don't move in the same way so I whisper the syllables and I move just the fingers I want to make sure everything moves together and then I try it out Tangy number five, I have a drone on. I want to just push speed I'll first slur and then I will double tongue and just hope that I can land right. When things aren't going right at top speed, I want to troubleshoot and see, can I listen more carefully and anchor? It's almost like relaxing the ears to listen better. the fingers as well. And part three is all about articulation scale game, Paul Edmund Davies 28 day warm up, and of course we're using the scale game tracker. It's a free download on my website, which I will link to below. little bit of a head wobble. Perhaps you're noticing a trend of really thinking about the neck and any stillness and holding. And I want all my fundamentals to train my body to be used really well and efficiently and keep ease. The sound is the best and the fingers are the most fluid and I can do the most things when I feel easy. And that is my whole goal in this whole thing. That's what I'm being aware of with my time. articulation in particular, I want the jaw to be free. It helps the tongue move with more ease. And I have a whole video on double tonguing and on articulation, so I will put those below as well. And the last thing, Paul Edmund Davies 28 Day Warm-Up Book. I'm doing articulation number three first, triple tonguing, then number two for double tonguing. This book is really challenging, but so fun. When I was feeling tension in the neck and shoulders, I tried to just stretch it out and see could I stay easy while doing this, but it was honestly time for a break, so I quickly touched on these two final exercises and then just took a substantial break. it for today. This is a little different each day, but that's just what I did that day. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.